So we had a customer reach out to us and they, they had a, a large requirement um, for, for pistol slides. And floor space wise at that time was a commodity for us because we hadn't moved to our new facility yet. So we looked at a different approach and thought, how could we have the same throughput and capacity? And then it led us to a horizontal. I'm Jason Hudkins. I own Lintech Engineering in Rochester, Indiana. We've been in business since 2001. We're standing in our new facility that we moved to in July. We had always wanted to go down the horizontal path because we see a lot of value added to it. Uh, we had never had anybody that kind of pushed us off that ledge. This project actually pushed us over that ledge and we decided to go that route. You know, the, the, the vertical machining centers, it required a lot of uh, operators in front of it and a, lot, and a lot more spindles. And then of course you still have, you have your downtime between loads, your load and unload time. All, all of that load and unload time is basically free on the, on the uh, horizontal. One of the things that we've really enjoyed about these machines is it's helped us develop a tool management that allows us to be successful. Anytime you get into a large production job like this, and there's a lot of unknowns, you learn a lot as you go. Um, tool life management is a really important thing. The tool life management on, on these machines are second to none. They've really helped us pinpoint and, and it, we've upped our production just by doing more of preventative, predictive type tool changing based on the tool management feedback that we get. The other thing is, is the probing. So we have some very critical dimensions on these parts and we're able to use the probing functions so that after every operation going on to the next operation where there's a critical dimension, we actually jump in there and probe to make sure we know where the parts are at. At first, we didn't utilize that function and we noticed we were having some variations and we couldn't really pinpoint it down to, and we pinpointed it down to the fixturing, the parts actually moved. And so we were like, we can't redesign our fixturing. We're already in, into this thing very deeply. And, so we came up with the idea, well, let's just use the probe and just reset the coordinates every time that we go from that operation. And uh, to be honest with you, it really, it, it, it worked very well, so. We don't notice any variations. Like we have to actually put identifiers on these parts to know which machine they came from. Because you, you know, you look at the, you look at the, mach the, the machine parts, there's no way you could tell, you know, this part came from this machine versus this machine versus this machine. A very, very stable process. We just uh, were, were given a, a contract to make barrels, pistol barrels. We looked at staffing. Obviously, we know that that's an issue nowadays. So we thought, well, let's go with a robot and create a robotic cell. So, so we have a, a robot sitting in the middle. It'll basically bring raw material in. It will load it in the lathe. The lathe will, will pre-qualify, do the turning on the external of the barrel. It'll unload it from there, take it into the UMC 500. UMC 500, will, since it's five axis, it can get to every side of the, of the part. And we're doing a one-piece flow. The older Haas machines that we have, we do uh, secondary operations on firearm parts over there. We just we just don't have any issues with those machines. We utilize those machines uh, three shifts a day, full shift on first, half staff shift on second, and then we have a skeleton crew on thirds. Um, the opportunity, we're always looking at opportunities. As long as you know we know the Haas is in behind us and help us get to where we're going to go, that we know we can rely on them, and we look to them obviously to uh, help us grow in the future.